Beat to here, and these are my first impressions of the Hottie S Wireless from G Wolves. I honestly thought this mouse wasn't gonna happen. They teased it so long ago, and then there was like radio silence. We'd see little drawings, we'd see little concepts of it, we see shells of it, but we never got the official version of it coming out until recently. But now I have it here in my hands, and I'm ready to give you guys my thoughts on this mouse. Now, this is a sample version, so there could be some changes between now and the final release of the mouse towards the end of next month. Now, I not only want to help you guys decide on whether you want to buy this mouse, but I also want to help G Wolves make the final product better as well. Before we begin, though, guys, I have a word from our sponsor, Luster. Okay, so you know when you're shopping on Amazon, there's a million options to choose from, and every product basically has four and a half stars. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel overwhelmed sometimes, and I wonder if the reviews are even real. So I end up going to 50 different sites trying to figure out what's the best, and at the end of it all, I'm still left confused as ever. Well, Luster can help. It's a free browser extension that analyzes trusted expert reviews from the likes of wire cutter, YouTube videos, and even Reddit discussions. And it gives you an instant second opinion right on Amazon so you don't even have to leave the page. Luster can even recommend you products based on your budget. It does real time price comparisons across Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, Target, and more. So you can always sleep easy knowing you got the lowest price possible and will even let you know when the products are going on sale. It's like the old saying goes, Time is money, but with Luster, you save both. It's free and it's so simple. So just click the link in the description, install Luster, and let the extension do all the heavy lifting while you do your online shopping. So I'm gonna start off by trying to answer some of the questions that I've been seeing online about this mouse. How much is it gonna cost? I was curious. Well, the fine people over at X-Ray Pad told me this is gonna come in at $100 and it's gonna have free shipping. And when you look at the market right now, we have a wide variety of prices. We got the Superlight at the high end at $150, and then we have stuff like the Model O wireless down at $80. So this falls somewhere closer to the Model O wireless, but the Model O wireless is just making everybody look bad with the $80 price tag. I've, they can't be making money on that, are they? But for now, let's move on to the weight because I'm sure you guys are all curious about it. It's coming in at 59 grams on my scale. The weight distribution, you could tell it's congregated near the back of the mouse, similar to what we've been seeing with some other budget wireless mice. And this is due to having a heavier battery towards the back of the mouse. I think Logitech and the Model O wireless are just using lighter batteries than some of these budget options that we're seeing. And a big part of that is that they're using these proprietary sensors like the Banff sensor that have less power draw compared to the 3335 sensor in like the Ponage and now this G Wolves Hottie S. I think if this had a proprietary sensor in it, I feel like it would be around 50 to 52 grams. But don't get it twisted, this mouse is super light and it's so easy to control. Now this is the Stardust version with the blue buttons on it and the blue scroll wheel. But I hear when they release this uh, towards the end of next month, it's going to be an all black version, black scroll wheel, black side buttons, all that. And the coating feels pretty good. It's a smooth coating, but it does grip to your hand very nicely. And it feels like that old Air 58 coating, if you guys have ever held one of those, that's exactly what this mouse feels like. Now also noticeably changed is now on the bottom, they have the on off switch for the wireless and they have four PTFE feet on here, two at the front, one at the back, one big one. And around the sensor, they also have another huge mouse foot. I've never seen this before and I really like this design. It just gives your mouse a more even glide across the entire mouse. Speaking of wireless, they now have this dongle, hold this L, if you can even call it an antenna. It's like a NASA type antenna. I think Elon is missing his uh, SpaceX antenna. I think this fell off of uh, his recent launch. But uh, yeah, this thing, I don't, <laughs> this is just wacky to me. I don't know, like, <laughs> I opened the box and I, was, I couldn't believe it. I was like, really, G Wolves? Really? Really? Now, you don't have to use this because you could just unscrew it and then just use the USB-C receiver. And I believe this is done to give your wireless signal a stronger signal, of course. Uh, I use both. Didn't notice any difference between the two. But I guess it's like to say, uh, better safe than sorry. So uh, we can just add this big antenna onto it. So one thing noticeably missing from the box, I don't know if they're gonna change this in the final version, is that there's no USB adapter. There's just the cable, which charges the mouse, but there's no adapter to plug in the antenna like you see with other mice. And I think this was an overstep. I hope that they put this in in the final version. That way you won't even need this. Why not just have that little adapter, plug this into the little adapter, 
have it on your desk so it's closer to your mouse, better signal instead of putting this. And then I realized now you have to have two USB ports. You have to have one for this receiver and then you have to have one for the paracord for the cable that plugs into the mouse. So you're using two cable ports for this mouse. I don't like that, but I don't know, this feels old school. It feels out of place in this packaging and with this, we're in 2021. We don't need that. Also, the cable that they included within the box is stiff near the micro USB side. I'm gonna take this as a fluke because the rest of the cable feels spectacular. But anyways, the wireless performance has been really good with this mouse, no connection breakups or anything like that. Like I said, the side buttons do actuate when you do flex the side, but who's gripping their mouse that hard? I wanna know, <laughs> okay? If you're gripping your mouse to where your side buttons are actuating, you're doing it wrong. Okay, now this is using that same sensor as the Ponage Sim that I just reviewed. It's at 33, 35 sensor. It does have a high lift off distance, just like the Ponage, but it's not as high as that one. This one, when I reset my mouse, I never got any of that jitteriness or movement while moving my mouse. The DPI goes up to 16,000. But overall, the sensor was good, but I can't help but want more. So hopefully in the future, they come out with another version. I know that they will. g -Wolves always comes through. They're gonna update this mouse a little bit later on, but if you wanna buy in on the 3335 sensor, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But if you are sensitive to high lift off distance, just wait. Yo, G-Wolves, you gonna make me act up? You gonna make me do something I regret? I don't know if I need the Razer Viper Mini Ultimate anymore because I'm so happy with the shape of this mouse. Okay, don't get me wrong, I still need that mouse. But I'm not gonna lie, this is a worthy replacement and it's got me feeling some type of way. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. The shape it reminds me the most of is like a Ultralight 2 with a hump. It's shorter than that one. I have medium hands, 19 by 8.5 centimeters. So that's measuring from top to bottom. And then width wise is 8.5 for me. And I told you guys, I love small mice right now. That's my thing. Okay, I just feel so snappy with it. For those of you guys out there who choose smaller mice, smaller than probably what you should be using, you know, you just feel like you just hit flick shots, like you can control the mouse like it's nothing. With these bigger mice nowadays, like the XM1, I feel like I lose all control of the mouse and it just feels like I'm just like moving around a big, I don't know, but I'm just moving around something big, okay? That came out wrong. But if you're a fan of the MM711 like I was, I didn't like how big that hump was. This is a little bit more tame, which I really like. If you love the Razer Viper Mini, you're gonna love this mouse. Especially for all you claw grip users out there and fingertip grip users, you guys are gonna love this mouse. Like I said, well, did I say this yet? Buy this mouse when it comes out, buy it. It's that good. I know this is a first impressions video, but I'm so impressed by this mouse and I think it has the potential to be the star mouse of this entire year before the year even starts. So those are my recommendations. If you have huge hands, this mouse isn't gonna be for you. Maybe wait for the regular hottie wireless, but for us like medium to small handed users, this is, this is A1. I tried to do like a A1. Anyways, moving on to the buttons. The mouse one and two have the Kale 8.0 switches in them. Mm, 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 mm. My, my, my. They're so good. I love them. They're light, they're crispy. Now I prefer the clickiness of the back button and the front button is just tough and it has a lot of pre-travel, which I do not like. Whereas the back button is on par with the Ultralight 2, one of my favorite all time side buttons. This scroll wheel really reminds me of the Ultralight 2. Very light, but this one has more defined stops, which I really like. And also the DPI button feels really nice as well. Let's drop a sound test so you guys can hear what this mouse sounds like. Oh yeah, the first oh yeah of 2021. And there's no mouse more deserving 
than this one, the Hadi S Wireless. They actually have some software now that is really responsive. You can change the DPI. You can also change the RGB on that G logo inside the mouse as well. Then they have a page for macros and things like that as well. So I'm just gonna leave you guys with this. I plugged in this mouse, did some warm up, and I started destroying with this mouse. Like absolutely destroying. I felt like I had so much control over this mouse. That's all I'm gonna say right now. Buy this mouse when it goes on pre-order later next month, $100. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for my first impressions of the Hadi S Wireless. If you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button because I will be dropping the final version review later on, well, whenever I get it. That's when I'll drop it, all right? All right, guys, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.